No, the, 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 the extractions for me are always the first stage, at this point uh, in knowledge of the disease. Yeah, that, that's why I did a thorough workup before, and obviously I would not use immunosuppressive therapies in FVIVF, VLB positive cats or cats with any severe underlying systemic conditions.
So stem cells, the, the two studies that were done, they both were using fresh stem cells intravenously. And they were given twice in three weeks time. And when you are giving them intravenously, it's similar to giving transfusion, slow and observe the for any possible side effects. And what is also interesting, those, those 
those clients usually come in and say that the cat is growing with the teeth because they are also extruding. This problem is usually seen on the maxillary canine teeth, but it can also, and you will see, it can also affect the mandibular or any other area in the mouth, but usually with Мы все равно всегда должны действовать по принципу 
chirurgical extraction. And the reason is that it has been shown that this is actually localized osteomyelitis. So by removing all this unhealthy bone and soft tissue, we actually deprive the area and make it more prone to healing. So this is actually after I remove the tooth, all the unhealthy soft tissues and also all the expanded bone. And this is two week recheck, so everything looks now nice. And there certainly are several other non-neoplastic lesions that can affect the oral cavity of cats. And we discussed the stomach. 
дай из treatment Лечение стоматита, протокол лечения стоматита, мы с вами только что уже обсудили. So here are now a few cases. Давайте несколько случаев рассмотрим. So this cat you can see has several gingival enlargements and several teeth. У этой кошки мы видим несколько очередных проблей десны, расположенных в районе разных зубов. But then we take dental radiographs and we see that those teeth are actually perfectly healthy. Однако рентгенологически, если вы видите данные рентгенограммы, мы видим, что вот эти зубы, которые соответствуют очагу гиперглазии, совершенно здоровые. So what I did in this case, I amputated those lesions, performed gingivectomy, submitted to pathology, it came back as inflammatory lesions, and it never recurred after that procedure. Доктор в этой ситуации провела гиперглазию локальную, то есть истекла вот эти поврежденные участки гиперглазии, отправив в гиперглазическое исследование, которое пришло отрицательно, то есть кроме воспаления пролетеративного больше ничего, никаких признаков патолог не нашел. И после вот такой вот хирургической санации, хирургического сечения очагов гиперглазии у кошки никогда не было повторения этой проблемы. So again, I don't know what to call this, but the, the clinical signs, the radiographic signs,